Hello, Sudoku friends, and welcome to our websudoku.com evil puzzle. You can see the identifier here if you want to call it up and give it a go. I just pulled it up from the website and uh, I want to see how it goes. I sometimes am unable to solve these without using pedestal marks. Uh, so let's see how this one goes. Well, there, there is, of course, an eight here and here that puts an eight in this cell. And no explanation necessary for that. And I make a mental note now of this eight and this eight putting an eight in one of these two cells and therefore in one of these two empty cells. I also re relatively quickly spotted the six and a nine here and here, and they prevent a six and a nine from going in this cell. And we have a six and a nine here they block this cell from being a six or a nine. So a six and a nine for this row will have to go in these two cells, leaving a two and a five for this cell and a two and a five for this cell. Admittedly, not immediately very helpful, but it's something that I now know and something I will take into consideration as I continue with the solve. There is a four in this row and there's a four in this row and there is a four in this column, and that severely restricts the fours for the bottom row nine. It needs to go here. And that gives us a four and a five for these two cells. Let me explain. The five here puts a five in one of these two cells, right? And we already have a four and a five in this column. We have now a four and a five, a ghost five in this column. We need to have a four and a five in column six as well, since they can't go in either of these two cells. They also can't go in this cell because of the four and the five. So these two cells here will have to be a four and a five. And one of these cells will have to be a six, of course, because of the six here. And the other two uh, digits will have to be a three and a seven, and I can't place them at the moment. But now I know what to look for. Usually when I find out, for example, in this case, uh, this cell will have to be a two or a five. We already established that. And this, these two cells will have to be a six or a nine. So that's a two, five, six, and a nine. And there are six empty cells that need to be filled. And since we know that these three cells will have to contain at least a two or a five and a six and a nine, I always ask myself, what's left? What's left for this cell and this cell and this cell? And one of the digits that's left is a one. Since a one clearly can't go in these three cells, remember this is a two or a five and these have to be six and nines. And there is a one up here that puts a one in this cell. There's just no other place it can go. And that gives us a potential three for this cell and for this cell because of the three here. And they look here, we need to find a one, four, eight, and a nine for this column. And we already have the four and the eight. So that leaves us a one and a nine to be found. And since we clearly can't go in these two cells because they're already pre present in this box, and we have a one and a nine in this row, this cell will have to be a one or a nine, and so will this cell. Again, this doesn't immediately lead to a new digit, but it's something to keep in mind as I look for the two, six, and a seven that will still need to be found to complete this column. And here's something that we are often unaware of, but um, it often helps us solve a puzzle. Uh, we already established that an eight for this column will have to go here or here. Let me uh, repeat why. We have an eight here that can block these three cells and we have an eight here that blocks these two cells. So an eight for this row will have to go either here or here. Since we have an eight already in this column, we need an eight for this cell or for this cell. 
And the same is true for this box. It's pretty empty, but we know now because of the eight here and here that an eight will have to go in one of these two cells. So how can we now place an eight in this row? Since it clearly can't go here or here or here or here, it also can't go here because of the eight here. We now know that this cell must be an eight. Take a look at this three and this nine. They block a three and a nine from going anywhere else in this block, doesn't it? Uh, we happen to have two empty cells here, and we also happen to lack a three and a nine. So a three and a nine will have to go in this cell and in this cell. And that leaves a four, five, and a seven for these three cells. And since this cell must be a three or a nine, it cannot be a four. And we have a four here and here and up here. And that gives us a four for this cell like so. The three and a five here, of course, prevent a three and a five from going in this cell. And a three and a five here prevent a three and a five from going in this cell. Therefore, this cell will have to be a three or a five and this cell will have to be a three or a five. And that gives us a four, I believe. So a four can't go here and a four can't go here. And this cell has to be a three or a five. Then a four will have to go in one of these two cells. And uh, with a ghost four here and a four in this row, we need to find a four for one of these three cells. And these two fours block these two cells, and that is a four here. And remember that this cell had to be a five. We found that out early in the game. This is now a five. And because this is a five, then this, of course, now must be a three. And now we found a solution for the three and a nine here, didn't we? Because of the three now here, this becomes a nine and this is a three. The three here and the three here lets us enter a three into the, this cell like so. These now have to be a six and a seven and these two a one and a nine. We have a nine already in the row. So the one of course goes here and the nine here. We still remember that these two cells had to be a one and a nine, didn't we? And I'm sure we all remember that these two cells had to be a six and a nine. Now, given the nine up here, we know that this is a six and this is a nine. The six here and here forces a six into this cell. And now one of these two cells will have to be a six. Uh, and this cell will have to be a five or a seven, and so will this cell here. And since there is a five in this row already, the seven goes here and the five must go here. And also now remember how we said that one of these two cells would have to be a three because of the three here, of course. So given this three and this three and the three up here, we know that this cell now has to be a three. And that gives us an easy two for this cell, doesn't it? Because of the two up here in the top row. So this is now a two. And now we find the solution for the two and the five. Here's a two and here's a two. That makes this a two and this a five. These have to be a three and a five. These two must be a one and a five. And we have a five up here already. So that means that the one goes here and the five here. And this one and this one and the one up here, of course, gives us the one for this cell. And we remember that the other cell here had to be a nine, don't we? Now the nine here and here and here gives us this nine like so. And this nine and this nine and this nine force a nine into this cell.
and I think we are slowly getting there. This puzzle does appear to be a little more challenging than the usual evil puzzles by sudoku.com, but I, I don't mind, and I hope that you don't either. Now, there's a one here, and there's a one here, of course, it gives us a one for the top row and the one for this row because of the one here and here and here. This is where the one goes for the bottom row. I almost forgot about the two cells up here. Of course, they have to be a seven and an eight. Since we have an eight here and a seven here, the distribution of those should be pretty obvious, like so. And now the eight up here and the eight here and this eight gives us the eight for this row. And now we have to have an eight for one of these two cells that will materialize soon enough, I think. Now, these two cells were a six and a seven, weren't they? And we have a seven now in this row. So the six will have to go here and the seven therefore here. And the six here and the six here fills this empty cell with a six. Funny enough, we still can't find homes for the four, five, and seven for these three cells. We'll have to wait uh, just a little bit longer. We need to find a seven and an eight for these two empty cells, don't we? And uh, we can't do that either. It's a little obscure, but uh, we need to find a two, three, five, and a six for these four cells. There's a three, five, and a six already that block this cell. And therefore, this must be a two. And that gives us a two for this cell. And now these two have to be a six and a seven. And there's a six already here. So the seven goes here and the six here. And this now must be a seven, making this a seven. And now we can do something about these three cells because of the two sevens here. We need to find now a four and a five for these two. And there's a four already in this column. That makes this a five and this a four. And therefore this a four, sorry, four. Uh, the remaining cell here must be a two, giving us a two for this cell. And finally an eight for this one here. We still need to find a three and a five for these, but I think they're going to emerge quite soon. These two cells have to be an eight and a six. We have an eight already here. So the six goes here and the eight here. And the six here and here finally gives us a six for the bottom row. And now we just need to find a three and it needs to go here because that's the last digit missing from the column. And that gives us a three for this cell and the five for this one. And now the five for this one. This was uh, quite a challenging puzzle, I think. Uh, but we managed to only use virtual pencil marks, pencil marks that we could quite easily keep in our head. And um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this solve and uh, didn't find it uh, too challenging. I thought about inputting a few pencil marks to illustrate some points, but um, I think you've seen enough of my videos to know that uh, they are not really always necessary. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you back here again soon. Bye for now.